I don't mean to be so bold, but you know sometimes when you get to sing the blues, it gets kind of good to you. You get so damn good to me till I have to preach it. Hello, VC. Hello, good people. Cheers, it's Chris, your blues guy. Welcome back to Blues Guy Vinyl. So as always, I appreciate you coming by and tuning in today, paying me a little visit, and I uh, hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, first of all, what's going on in the background? What's playing? Well, of course, a little bit of the man, John Lee Hooker. is an album, Boogie Chillin', of course, classic album. Uh, the title track, Boogie Chillin', uh, I like to see you walk, drifting and drifting, you're gonna miss me, classic stuff. Legend, John Lee Hooker. So for today's video, Jam on Vinyl, Jam on History, Jam on Vinyl's uh, 270 subscriber contest. Uh, he's, he's well past that now, he's right around just about 300, 303 or something like that, last I checked. So Mike, good on you pal, Jam on Vinyl, Jam on History. And uh, for this contest, and I'll, I'll list the uh, contest rules and all that uh, in the description below, but for his contest, he wanted you to show five albums that, uh, or songs that uh, sort of create sort of a playlist of a specific time in history, um, hence, you know, Jam On History. And uh, uh, that's, his, that's his bag, that's his thing. He's, uh, he's really into history, I believe. He's a history teacher, too, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. But... Uh, in any case, I've got uh, five albums here that uh, hone in on sort of a, a specific time period. And he also had a bonus question, and I'm going to address that as well. So without further ado, and uh, without any more blah, 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 let's get into this, shall we? 1969. Big year. Big year in music, big year in uh, world events and all that stuff, of course. Uh, big year for me, I was born in 1970, so I was conceived in 1969. So I thought, you know, pretty appropriate. And, um, you know, I've got a, a very specific, uh, very specific playlist or what have you, or a group of artists that uh, slot right in nicely that 1969 time period. And I'm going to kick it off, of course, with what was the big thing going on in music in 69? Woodstock. This is the uh, an original pressing of the three album set of the Woodstock album that was released, I believe in 70 or 71, but it's obviously from Woodstock, 1969. Um, this is that really cool sort of trifold album, which is very difficult to show, of course, but it opens up like so. I've shown this one before. Very proud of the fact that I picked this up for a dollar. And uh, while the uh, the outer cover, the outer jacket, has seen some love, I you know I can deal with it. The records inside are in terrific condition, and I mean it's Woodstock, it's '69. It's it's what it's all about. It's all about love. So yeah, some ring wear there, but uh, you know the records inside are in terrific condition. Uh, I'll pull one out just to show you the label. I'm sure most of us are familiar, but it's on the uh, uh, Cotillion label, which is kind of a cool looking label. Yeah. That cool red, very intense red label. And, uh, you know, I mean, what can you say about the Woodstock Festival, right? Uh, Can't Heat, Richie Havens, Country Joe and the Fish, Sha Na Na, Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, you know, outstanding stuff. Uh, a great sounding album, actually. Uh, again, while the jacket's rough, the uh, the records inside were very, very good condition. Just, you know, as the case when you go to these, this was from the Recordland dollar sale that I went to this, this past summer. So as with, you know, bargain bins and dollar bins, and big, huge record sales like that, often the records are kind of dusty or have a lot of fingerprints or are dirty. So, you know, they required some effort to clean them up, but no skipping, no scratching, not a lot of background noise or pops or anything like that, you know, sounding very good. So there you go. There is the first of my five, the Woodstock album, the three album set, 1969. Following with that theme of Woodstock, 
Well, who was one of the artists there? Well, my, you know, one of my favorites, Johnny Winter. This is the reissue of the Woodstock album, the Johnny Winter Woodstock album from Music on Vinyl. How about I take it out of the uh, the plastic here so you can see it a little better without the, the glare. There we go. Johnny Winter, one of my favorites. I talk about him here all the time. Fastest Fingers in the Blues, uh, outstanding musician, very bluesy, also a rock and roll guy as well. And, uh, you know, just one of those guys that can make that guitar do things that so many others would attempt and fail tremendously at. It. And Johnny Winter just makes a lot of other guitar players look like damn fools. Johnny Winter, Woodstock. Uh, Sunday, August 17th, 1969. Uh, this is a two album set as well. And inside, it's got some of the uh, stats, a little blur, track listing, and a very cool picture of the crowd there having a great time. So, yeah, uh, recorded in 1969, obviously. Uh, this was issued uh, 2019. Johnny Winter, Woodstock. Well, who else made an appearance at Woodstock? Well, in my book, when it comes to the ladies, one of the greatest that ever did it. You know, you, you don't get much better than Janis Joplin. This is the reissue, or this is the issue of Janis Joplin Woodstock, Sunday, August 17th, 1969. Uh, record store day. Uh, record store day copy. Again, at the insert. It's got a nice little blurb there as well, and then you know, track the stings and some of the credits that are on there. We are a vinyl issue. This is the issue. We are a vinyl. That's what you would expect for that nice center label, the Woodstock logo there. And uh, man, one of the most powerful performances at Woodstock. Janis Joplin. Very passionate. Again, you know, a voice that's almost unparalleled. One of the best who ever grabbed the mic and belted out some tunes. You know, very bluesy, very soulful. Again, much like Johnny Winter, could very capably run in the, the blues circles and in the rock and roll crowd as well. So in here you've got, of course, Summertime and Cosmic Blues, Can't Turn You Loose, Peace of My Heart, Ball and Chain, an old Big Mama Thornton song. Um, you know, just outstanding stuff. Janis Joplin. Woodstock. 1969. Hmm, I wonder if anybody is going to be able to guess what I'm going to show next here. Credence! Oh, yes. Yes, yes. You know, I've got to show me some Credence! Oh, this is the Credence Clearwater Revival, live at Woodstock. Terrific gatefold album. Still got the hype sticker in there. Got to hang on to that. Great shot of the, the boys there. This was actually some BCLT sent from a good friend of mine, Jamie Cottle, another fellow crazy Canuck. So uh, thanks again, Jamie. How you doing? Hope you keep them warm there out east. But uh, man, Credence, what can I say? Credence, one of my favorite bands of all time. Born on the Bayou, Green River, 99 and a Half Won't Do, uh, Commotion, Bad Moon Rising, Proud Mary, Put a Spell on You, Nighttime is the Right Time, Great Ray Charles track, Keep on Chuglin', one of their uh, huge stoner jams, and then Side 4, the complete, uh, all of Side 4, Susie Q. Dale Hawkins track that they cover masterfully, and uh, man, oh man, I meant, this is always, the packaging on this is great, I always have a tough time pulling it out of there, which is nice, because you don't have to worry about it tumbling it out of the cover. It's on that, uh, their, you know, reproduction of their fantasy label. I'm a huge Credence fan, Born on the Bayou, Green River, those two songs remind me of, uh, sort of, again, my childhood, as a kid growing up. Out in uh, sort of the uh, south shore of uh, the St. Lawrence, in, um, just outside of Montreal, Quebec, here in, Ca in Canada. It's a wonderful album. Credence, Credence Clearwater Revival, live at Woodstock. Of course, also 
1969, uh, August 17th. Terrific album. Sounds very good too. Great sound quality. You know, sometimes, you know, considering the, the time period when uh, Woodstock occurred and considering, you know, a lot of the obstacles and hurdles that they had to overcome, and, you know, sound recording being perhaps, you know, the technology not being what it is today, uh, you know, all of that taken into consideration, you know, outstanding. All of these albums sound very, very good. And uh, rounding it out, my number five for 1969 theme. There was a lot going on, like I said, with uh, with music in 1969 with the whole Woodstock thing. Excuse me. It's gonna wet my whistle and warm things up a little bit here. It's chilly, it's chilly again today. But another thing that was going on was, you know, not just uh, the whole music and uh, cultural movement and current events, but another huge thing that happened in 1969 that was a huge part of history, uh, the Apollo Moon Landing, Apollo 11. So this is an album that uh, my brother picked up for me for my birthday back this past summer, back in June. Apollo 11, we have landed on the moon. And, uh, great shot there of uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, I believe, was the third guy. I'm sorry, I always forget the third guy. <laughs> no, it is what it is. But, uh, Really cool uh, diagrams and artwork in there. A very, very educational blurb of text that's in there. Giving you a nice synopsis and rundown of what was going on leading up to the landing uh, and then the landing itself and then their safe return home. This is on Capitol, that uh, very cool sort of lime or avocado green Capitol label with the purple logo on there. And, uh, I don't know where he found this thing, but uh, just immaculate condition. You know, the, uh, the outer jacket of the cover itself, is, you know, not a thing wrong with it. You know, just like, like new condition. And the vinyl itself, same thing. You know, uh, I mean, he cleaned it up to, you know, a bit before he gave it to me. But again, not a scuff, not a scratch. Nothing. It's like like new and very nice weight to it as well. Great sound quality, you know. And it's on here. They've got you know, press conferences and then you know excerpts from uh, some of the communications between uh, the uh, Houston Flight Center uh, flight control and the astronauts themselves. And uh, you know, just a very fascinating listening. I've actually sat back with some head headphones on, some big can headphones, sound sound deadening headphones on, and just close my eyes and listen to it and. You know, it's just a terrific sounding album because, uh, uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of movies, of course, the, you know, the Tom Hanks movie and a bunch of documentaries, but when you just sit back and listen to it, you can really picture and, and sort of paint a, a nice picture in your mind's eye of what's been, what was going on at that time and, uh, you know, just exciting stuff, you know, whether you're, uh, you know, a moon landing conspiracy theorist or whatever the case may be. Either way, it's still a very, very important point in history. And, uh, you know, I think it wraps up nicely this whole 1969 uh, thing that was going on because, um, you know, there was that whole spacey flipping out thing going on with Woodstock and all the music and all the kids, uh, the, you know, the psych kids, the flower, flower power, flower children generation down here on the ground, but then up in the stars above, you know, much of that same thing, you know, very, uh, very new, very exciting, very trippy, very uh, uh, celestial things going on at that time. So uh, just a very, for me, I think a very pivotal time in American history, uh, whether it's music or, or science and all of that. So uh, yeah, there you go. And uh, oh, before I, uh, before I sign off here for the day, the, uh, the bonus question was to show your favorite mono pressing. Of course, Mike at Jamon is big into the mono. And, uh, you know, if I can, you know, if I have a choice between, if I, if I find two copies digging in, in one stereo, one's mono, I tend to grab the mono as well. And I've got quite a few mono records in my collection. I've got some mono of Muddy Waters. I've got some mono copies of uh, Rolling Stones. But I think for me, my favorite is, is definitely a blues album and uh, you know I didn't even have to give it a second guess and this is an original 1965 uh, Canadian pressing of Sunhouse the legendary father of the blues on uh, Columbia Records it's from 1965 this is in mono 
the jacket itself is in, you know, G++ condition, and the record inside is uh, very good to very good plus. Uh, whoever owned this record really took care of the vinyl. Uh, absolutely outstanding, you know, Sunhouse influenced so many blues artists and folk artists and rock and roll guys that came after him. Um, you know, he taught Muddy Waters to personally to play a couple of his songs and, uh, you know, uh, very influential in his very aggressive uh, Delta Bluesman style and his bottleneck style of playing. So on here, you know, you've got a lot of the classics that have been, of course, associated with Sunhouse, and you would recognize in a second, like Death Letter Blues and Louise McGee, um, Empire State Express, John the Revelator, uh, Preaching Blues, which was one of the songs that he taught Muddy, uh, Levy, Cap, Levy Camp Moan, uh, Grinning in Your Face, uh, Sundown. And the, the beautiful thing about uh, John the Revelator and Grinning in Your Face are their... Um, well, they're all acoustic songs, but uh, uh, Sunhouse doesn't play any instruments on them. He's just singing and clapping his hands, and that's it. And very powerful, very moving. And uh, Sunhouse had a very powerful voice, a very um, explosive way of singing, which I think a lot of that comes from not only because, you know, that was the Delta style, but because he... Uh, you know, he did a lot of uh, gospel and spiritual recordings, too. He was one of those guys that would, you know, he recorded some blues, and then he would, you know, kind of find religion and get all remorseful, so then he would sing some religious songs, and then he would kind of look over and see how much fun everybody's having over there in the blues, so he, uh, I think I'll go back over there for a little while. You know, and he wavered back and forth, but he always kept that very spiritual, very passionate aspect to his singing. You know, uh, you see a lot of footage, uh, video, old video footage of Sunhouse singing, and whether he's just singing or he's, he's playing guitar, and he often played on, you know, the steel body guitar. Uh, you see he's just his head leaning back and he's just pouring with sweat, and it's almost like he's, he's uh, you know, transported himself away to a different plane of existence, you know, and uh, uh, that's one of the things that I think was a huge influence about Sunhouse that uh, not only carried over into Muddy Waters, but then, you know, further and further on down the line, and like I said, to this very day, still a huge influence. So, uh, a terrific record. This has been issue, reissued a number of times already, so if you find one out there, the reissue is, is an outstanding album, and I would certainly recommend picking it up. Uh, simply wonderful. So, Sunhouse, the legendary father of the blues. That's my favorite mono copy uh, out of all my mono copy records that I have. So there you go. I think that's uh, going to do it here for today uh, for your blues guy. So once again, I want to thank you very much for tuning in. Appreciate that very much. Let me know what you think, as always, down in the comments below. Always appreciate the feedback. And once again, congratulations to Mike at Jam on Final for uh, surpassing now his 270 subscribers. And, uh, you know, um, great contest, very cool idea. And of course, good luck to everybody else in the contest. And I will uh, post a link as well in the uh, description below for uh, Jam on Vinyl's uh, channel. So if you haven't gone over there and subscribed, I would strongly suggest that you swing by and check it out. Uh, he's, a, he's a great fan of a wide range of music. Uh, he, you know, he loves uh, historical records. He loves uh, his mono stuff, of course. He's a big Bruce Springsteen fan. But, uh, you know, he likes to sort of weave his way through all kinds of genres, as many of us do. And he's got a great collection there. So and he's a great musician, too. He's a drummer. So uh, that's great, because I'm a bit of a drummer in my own right. So, you know, as, as drummers, you know, we, we tend to, uh, you know, be a little bit biased in that sense. But he's great stuff over there. Mike and Jam on, Jam on Vinyl. So once again, check him out. And thank you very much, Mike, for hosting this contest. Uh, looking forward to the results, and once again to all the other entrants, good luck with the, uh, with the contest. Take care, have yourselves a good day, and of course, most importantly, do not forget, keep digging and keep spinning. Alright everyone, take care, have a great day.